Imagine a world where electricity flows freely from thin air. No bills, no cords, no hassle. It sounds too good to be true, but Norwegian inventor Rydar Finsrud has spent years chasing that exact dream. A celebrated artist and tinkerer from a small coastal town, Finsrud built a strange machine of swinging pendulums, rolling steel balls, and powerful magnets. When he unveiled it in the mid-1990s, crowds were astonished. Could this really be the first true perpetual motion engine? When I looked at this device, I was amazed by the ingenuity which had gone into this. If the ball is heavy, it's not going to get lifted off the track. And at the same time, if the rid magnet on the top, if that has a pivotal connection to the rest of the system so that it can easily move up and down, it will move down towards the ball. Normally, the efficiency of any device is about 20, 30, 40, 50 percent. This device may have an efficiency of the order of 80 and 90 percent. And I have even read some literature which says it has 99 percent efficiency. Rumors even spread that it could power your home for free. Some folks whispered a darker twist. Powerful oil companies were watching closely, and they might try to stop him before he unleashed his free energy generator on the world. Rydar Finsrud is quite the character. By day, he's a painter and sculptor, the kind of wildly creative artist who once built a tiny hot air balloon as an art project. But underneath that artistic soul is a lover of physics and gadgets. Finsrud calls his project the Perpetuum Mobile and poured over a decade of his life into it, even funding much of it by selling his own paintings and sculptures. In workshops and galleries across Norway, he melded art with engineering. By the mid-1990s, he finally had something to unveil, a contraption that looked more like a kinetic sculpture than a power plant. Even Finsrud treats it almost like a living creature. He says he hopes it proves free energy is real. For many, his unwavering belief only adds to the intrigue. When Finsrud revealed his device, people were astonished. Local TV crews captured it quietly, clicking as the steel ball glided around its loop, propelled by unseen forces. Skeptical journalists blurted out, where does the power come from? And Finsrud would only grin and say, look at it yourself. He later described watching it run as like looking at the future. In the hushed light of his workshop, the machine truly seemed alive. Pendulums swinging in perfect rhythm, brass gears turning without noise. Word of the device spread beyond Norway, with media calling it a miracle perpetual motion device that made some scientists scoff and others dare to dream. At its heart, Finsrud's machine is surprisingly elegant. A small steel ball, about 0.8 kilograms, sits in a circular groove, rolling endlessly around a slightly tilted brass and steel track. Powerful permanent magnets are mounted at four points around the loop. Each time the ball approaches a magnet, the magnet pulls it forward with a gentle tug. At the last second, a heavy pendulum swings that magnet aside, whisking it out of the way so the ball sails past unhindered. After the ball rolls on, it depresses a hidden spring. When the spring snaps back, it gives a pulse to the pendulum, nudging it to keep swinging. Finsrud even calibrated the weight so precisely that a massive 40 kilogram counterweight at the center helps stabilize the motion. In effect, each magnet pull and pendulum push recycles energy within the system. This precise loop, pull, swing, spring, repeat, keeps the ball moving smoothly in its cycle, like clockwork with nearly no friction. The result of this clever setup is that the ball can roll for a truly long time. In one demonstration, the ball made nearly 16 loops per minute, synchronized with the pendulums, for three full days with almost no change in speed. Engineers even timed it with stopwatches. To their amazement, it stayed on beat for over 72 hours straight. If you listen closely, 
you can hear a faint tick each time the ball passes a fixed point. That tiny sound is literally the machine slowly leaking energy to friction. In effect, the machine runs at extraordinarily high efficiency. But of course, no machine is perfectly lossless. Eventually, the ball's motion will fade unless it gets an extra push. Still, watching it tick along for days gave the physics community chills. It seemed downright uncanny, almost magical. Magnets like these are the secret engine in Fiensrud's device. Positioned at four points around the track, each powerful horseshoe magnet grabs the steel ball and gives it a little push each time it passes by. The magnets themselves are unpowered. Like the ones on your fridge, they just hold stored energy indefinitely. In perfect timing, as soon as the ball is about to hit, a pendulum swings the magnet out of the way so the ball can keep going. After the ball has passed, it presses into a hidden spring. The spring then snaps back and sends a pulse to the pendulum, nudging it to the ready position. In effect, each magnet pull and pendulum push feeds energy back into the system. This precise magnetic dance, pull, swing, spring, repeat, is what keeps the ball rolling seemingly on its own. Finsrud imagined the next step, hooking this perpetual motion mechanism up to a generator. He pictured adding a tiny arm or paddle that the rolling ball would strike each loop, turning a small dynamo or turbine. The idea was explained in the documentary. If somehow the machine ran at 100% or greater efficiency, then that arm could spin and produce electricity. Fans quickly took it further. Some dreamed of lighting up the whole house, charging phones for free, or running motors nonstop. Finsrud himself hinted that on the right scale, his invention might power entire buildings. He quietly told people he felt he was tantalizingly close to tapping unseen energy, perhaps harvesting a bit of the universe's boundless supply. So how much electricity could it really generate? To be honest, nobody knows for sure yet. The device has never been hooked up to light anything publicly that we know of. Finsrud kept it mainly as a demonstration piece in his studio. If you imagine attaching a small light bulb, it might flicker weakly when tapped, but there's no record of it running a lamp for long. Engineers point out that if you try to draw power out of this system, the whole contraption simply slows down. In practice, the hope that it could ever produce continuous power remains just that, a hope. On its own, this machine so far only moves. It doesn't actually power our lights or phones yet. Instead of electricity, a different buzz arose around the machine, rumors of interference. As the tale of free energy spread online and at science fairs, some whispered that shadowy forces were at work. Finsrud himself began to act more guarded, talking in interviews about secrecy and security. The whispers started. If this device really threatened fossil fuel profits, would Big Oil take notice? Had he been warned off? Some even joked that his project made him a target, like a modern-day Snowden of energy. These questions lit up blogs and late-night chats, turning the saga into something out of a spy thriller. Finsrud took the possibility of interference quite seriously. He reportedly kept the machine locked behind sturdy doors and even stored it in a secure vault at night. Only trusted friends or fellow engineers were allowed to see it in action, and then only under supervision. Some speculated that he even hired private guards or set up alarms around his workshop. Whether he was truly threatened or simply being cautious, the effect was the same. The machine became an even bigger secret. Each new padlock only made outsiders more curious. Was the invention truly dangerous or just powerful knowledge? The secrecy turned into part of the legend. Meanwhile, far from Finsrud's lab, oil wells power the world in the old way. Picture endless pump jacks under the sky, grinding night and day to pull out fuel. This is the empire of big oil. 
If a small machine in Norway really threatened free energy, that empire could wobble, and if free power ever arrived, their profits could vanish. Rumors began that industry executives were secretly watching Finsrud. The stark contrast between these drilling rigs and Finsrud's single rolling ball only fueled the mystery. Of course, most scientists and engineers are unconvinced by the gossip. To them, Finsrud's machine is just a clever mechanical sculpture. Interesting, but not magical. They note that none of the fundamental laws of physics has been broken. Experts who inspected the device found no hidden motors or batteries. It really is just magnets, springs, and weights. Finsrud even invited engineers to examine it under supervision, and none discovered any secret power source. In the end, the only conclusion is that energy must come from somewhere, and so far no secret source has been found in this machine. Finsrud himself keeps asking the same big question. Where does the power come from? He often recounts that scientists he consulted could not answer it either, which feeds the mystery. Perhaps he really doesn't know. At times, he suggests it might tap into some not-yet-discovered energy source in the universe. He talks of a future of free and equal energy for all when describing his machine to hopeful audiences. For now, he seems content to let the device speak for itself, still confident that it holds some secret truth. Whether or not we've found that truth yet, Finsrud's conviction makes the mystery feel more alive. Many physicists have to pinch themselves to stay patient. They'll remind you that the laws of thermodynamics are not suggestions, they're laws. Magnets and weights can only redistribute energy you already put in. You can't get extra output for free. Even Finsrud admits that if the machine is left completely alone, the motion will eventually die out unless he gives it tiny pushes. Skeptics also point out the faint click sounds and the small amount of heat you can detect. That's just the energy slowly leaking away. In plain terms, you can't run a machine forever without an outside push. So far, this device has not broken any of physics' big rules, 